Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. As usual, Doug Fernandez from the Herald Tribune joins me in studio to talk about some of the big games. Uh, let's start with your game first, Fern. You were at, uh, you had an interesting one over there. Charlotte versus Sarasota, two teams going in two totally different directions. Yeah, Charlotte, this basically was a, was a tune-up game for their playoff matchup next week. For Sarasota, uh, they were continuing what has been their worst season in over a decade. Uh, Sarasota lost 53-21, to 21, but the big thing about this was that Sarasota lost four fumbles, its first four possessions of the game. I mean, Charlotte only had to drive an average of like three plays for each one of their touchdowns. Three different guys put the ball right on the ground. Twice Charlotte returned it for a touchdown. It was basically uh, 27 to nothing by the end of the first quarter, and uh, there was a running clock by the fourth quarter. So Charlotte uh, moves on. They, face, uh, they host Cape Coral Ida Baker next week, while Sarasota... Uh, this is its worst season since Mike Hobby went 0 and 10 back in 1990, I believe. Well, you look at a game like this too, Fern. You know, given a team like Charlotte, they're in the playoffs. You know, last game of the season, the last thing they want to have happen is someone get injured. Did you sense that they were kind of, you know, maybe easily sliding some of those starters out of the game? Or, oh, or what oh, did you see? Oh yeah, I mean, by the second half, it was a running clock in the fourth quarter. By the second half, there were a lot of players playing for Charlotte that I didn't recognize. I really had to go deep into the roster. Uh, Bellamy, the leading rusher, gained 137 yards. But Binky Waldrop was able to use his entire team, and no one got hurt. And he said he feels great heading into the first run of the playoffs next week. Yeah, and Binky also mentioned, too, in the uh, postgame sound that uh, it's all about getting out to a fast start, mm -hmm. and they definitely got off to a fast start. Or well, if we could, uh, we talked about uh, the playoffs uh, happening next week, uh, first round regional quarterfinals. We've got eight teams locally uh, that will be going to the playoffs. Uh, here we go right here. St. Pete's at Venice. Uh, Manatee at Gibbs, Ida Baker at Shaw, Lakewood Ranch at Cape Coral. Uh, Fern, there's something interesting about the, those first four games there too, huh? Yeah, and 5A, 4A, and even we go to the 3A graphic, if the local teams win their first games, they'll both be facing each other in the second round. You'll have Manatee facing Venice, you'd have Cape Coral, uh, well, uh, Charlotte facing Lakewood Ranch, and then you'd have Braden River facing Southeast if they all win their opening round games. And you remember earlier this year, Manatee played Venice. Venice really throttled them, so the Hurricanes are looking for maybe rematch and revenge if they face them again. Yeah, and that's something interesting, too, because you, you, if you rewind time, you know, when Venice had that undefeated season last year in the regular season, uh, they, they ran through Charlotte. Mm -hmm. They kind of just annihilated them on a regional TV. And in the playoffs, when it counted the most, Charlotte comes up to Venice, they got revenge. So we could very well have something similar to that play out should they win their first round games. Uh, you, you look at this, you know, we look at some of the scores here, you know, we had, yeah, we hadn't had overtime games all season long. We had two of those tonight. Uh, if we could roll some video of the Cardinal Mooney uh, St. Stephen's game. Uh, this was a game, Fern, that was uh, rather interesting, uh, given the fact that both teams are not going to the, mm -hmm. to the playoffs. But you could not tell that uh, here tonight. You know, look at this long touchdown pass here. Um, you know, Flesner to uh, Dylan Nafke there. Uh, he had two touchdowns on the night. Here's a game that uh, Cardinal Mooney won 35-28 in the overtime. And then out at Twin Lakes Park, ODA. ODA is coming to life. Uh, you, you've seen this team in action. A.J. Strong, I mean, this kid had four touchdowns tonight. Also played a heck of a game defensively. Uh, I mean, you can't say enough <laughs> about some of these kids. And those kids are the ones that are going to the playoffs. I'll tell you, again, we see it time and time again. If you have that running back, you can give the ball 25 times to minimize everything else. You're going to go a ways. Uh, last year, they lost in the regional semifinals out of Door Academy. They finished 8-1. and one. Uh, They take on St. Pete Admiral Farragut. Uh, or they host them in the Class 1B playoffs. So uh, all of these teams, we got some teams on the road, some teams at home. A lot of good viewing football next week for a lot of local fans. Fern, you've been around high school football. You've just been around football for a mm -hmm. long time. Give me your sense of what you see. We've got eight teams in here. We know come the, the following Friday we probably won't have eight teams still around. Looking at the list right now, just Playing devil advocate here, what do you see? Who do you see moving on? Well, I, I just I haven't seen a lot of these teams, but the home team I give that immediate edge because you get to figure a lot of these teams are evenly matched. The home team I think definitely has the prohibitive advantage. But you look at the Manatee St. Pete and St. Pete Venice that matchup. I, I look for both local teams to move on and meet in the second round. 
while you're looking at some of the other teams, Charlotte at home against Cape Coral, Ida Baker, what I saw out of Charlotte tonight, they have to be the favorite. I saw Lakewood Ranch, they're 5-4 and four playing at Cape Coral. That's going to be a tough matchup. So I think the home teams, if you're home and make the opponent come to you, a definite advantage for the home team there. All right, there you have it right there. So it should be down and dirty next week. Regional quarterfinal start, the real deal, the road to the state championship. We'll see how it all unfolds. And we will be back again mm -hmm. next week. For Doug Fernandez, I'm Antoine Smith. Uh, that'll do it for this week's uh, edition of Friday Football Fever. So long.